to introduce our guest on the program today. He's an author, speaker, and songwriter. Please welcome Pastor Stephen Marshall of Stephen and Pam Ministries. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Good to see you guys. Always good to see you, and thank you for uh, joining us today. And just want to ask, uh, what has God laid on your heart to uh, share with people, encourage them with this season? Well, as you guys know, and, and I think, Judge, good to see you, Judge. Um, you guys were just referring to people dealing with fear. And right now, that's a big one, you guys. I mean, so many people in our culture, um, people who are in leadership, pastors are struggling with fear and it's a big deal. I mean, right now, I think so many people are concerned about the future. And there's a duality to this. You know, life doesn't tolerate a vacuum. So, you know, sometimes we're trying just to get the bad stuff out. But if you're not putting the right stuff in, it, it doesn't really work. You, you, end up, you end up defaulting back into this rut, getting stuck. You end up defaulting back into this ditch of concern and anxiety, as Judge was talking about. In the middle of the night, I know some of the folks listening right now are feeling that where in the middle of the night, they're suddenly being awoken by what about this? And what are you going to do if this doesn't happen? I've talked with some great pastor friends of mine who are telling me, Stephen, I'm just I'm concerned, like all the things we've done in the past, none of that's working. What are we going to do? But, you know, the good news is God has a plan God's got a future for us, and Jesus is still Lord. He's still King of Kings. So I think one of the secrets in going forward is we got to do a little bit like what Paul did in Philippians 3, verse 13. He said, this one thing I do. You know, when Paul the Apostle says, here's one thing I do, I pay attention. I'm thinking, what's the one thing that Paul's doing? He said, here's the one thing I work at, I strive at. He said, letting go of the past and reaching forward into the future, into what God has for us in the future. And I think sometimes as Christians, we almost think that that's um, sacrilegious, like that's a bad thing, letting go of some of the things that worked so well back in the 90s or in the early 2000s or even in you know 2018, that worked so well. And I think sometimes people think maybe it's disrespectful to God to let go of what worked yesterday but I think that's part of the process. God, who makes all things new. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 118 that God is the one that gives us a new day. We celebrate and we rejoice because this is the day that the Lord has made. Well, I can't have Monday or Tuesday unless I let go of Sunday. And I think that's where we're at right now as a, as a family, as a Christian culture. We're letting go of the past and we're reaching forth unto the good things that God has before us. And so that helps us deal with the vision issue. But to deal with the fear issue, we need the Holy Spirit's help. You know, Jesus said very specifically in John 16, he said, the spirit, the comforter is going to come. That's what he called him, the comforter with a capital C. And he said, the comforter is going to come. And you guys, here's what he's going to do. Here's how he's going to comfort you. He's going to lead you into all truth, and he's going to show you things to come. Now, if you ask any of the CEOs right now, if you ask any of the great leaders in our country, what's the thing that's keeping them awake at night? It's what's coming. Everybody wants to know what's coming because change is happening so fast, so furious. Everybody's trying to figure out, how do I get ahead of this? All the pastors in the country are trying to figure out what's coming. What am I going to get ready for? How am I going to handle this? Well, this is what the Holy Spirit is an expert at, showing us things to come. And if right now you're watching TCT and you're concerned about your future, this is what the Holy Spirit is an expert at, showing you things to come. And that's how he comforts us. He leads us into all truth. And Jesus said specifically, this was in John 16, 13. He said, he will show you things to come, good things. The Lord's going to show us his good plans. So how do I overcome fear? How do I overcome the anxiety? By meditating on God's good things, his good plans for my life, for our ministry, for our country, for our world. Good things to come. God's got good things, right, you guys? Absolutely. That is a good word that a lot of people need to hear right now with uh, so much uh, going on in our world and our, our country. But uh, just keeping our faith and our trust in God is the right way to go. But uh, I want to ask you to talk a little bit about uh, pastors through all this. Uh, I know you serve as uh, head of the Worldwide Evangelistic Association and uh, through that have the opportunity to counsel 
uh, many pastors. Uh, share with us some of the struggles you're seeing for those that are uh, leading us in our churches that we're looking to as our uh, source of, of spiritual growth. Yeah, you know, that's a great question, Tom. I think part of the challenge with all of us is the, um, the ability to mourn the past. And when I say that, I want, I want to draw your attention to the Beatitudes that Jesus taught in Matthew 5. And one of the first one he said is, blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And we were just talking about the, the amazing ministry of the Holy Spirit to comfort us by showing us things to come. Well, you know, you can't really have the things to come unless you deal with what was. And to properly mourn something you have to be able to lay it down, let it go. You have to be thankful for everything that God, um, God's grace um, empowered us in um, enjoying it and being a part of our life. It could have been a person. You know, Pam and I, we just had a very dear uncle just go to heaven. And, you know, we've, we're having to mourn that uncle going to heaven and the, the, the inability anymore to converse here on earth, but knowing that in the future, when we're in eternity together, we're going to have some great times in the coffee shop together with Jesus and with our uncle. But that being said, we need to be thankful for the days that we had here on earth, but realize and face the reality that those days are gone. And then that energizes us, that state of mourning, if it's according to Matthew 5 verse 4, it ends up energizing us to be comforted because we're going into the future. It ends up giving us a strength and an empowerment to step into the future. And, you know, you guys know well, there's people that that end up having a trauma in their life. They end up having a goodbye. They maybe have to set something down. It could even be a CEO or a pastor of a church that has to set down a product line, has to set down an era in their church. But there's an unwillingness to let it go and to pass it on. And you have to be able to mourn properly. That means you gotta be able to celebrate the legacy. You gotta celebrate what was. You gotta celebrate who was in the driver's seat in the past and maybe the things that had happened in the past. But now you gotta be able to set it down, be thankful for it, and then be energized to move forward into the future. And that means knowing that clearly, like Jeremiah 29, 11, God has a hope and a future for us, but you can't have the future if you're unwilling to let go and properly mourn the past. And I think that's a big deal. I think that's what a lot of pastors are going through because there's been some great things that have happened in the past. There's been some wonderful things that have happened in their churches, but God's doing a new thing. God's saying, you know, just like he says in Jeremiah 33, 3, he's saying, won't you know it? I'm doing a new thing. It's a hidden thing, but I want to reveal it to you. But, you know, we don't get that revelation unless we're willing to obey and set down what once was. Wow, Stephen, uh, this is a great uh, talk that you're, you're doing right now. But I want to say that as you talk about this uh, aspect of putting things down uh, and, and moving on, looking towards the future, having that forward-looking vision. A, a lot of times we talk about that, but uh, it's kind of putting away the, the negative things of our past, you know, putting away our old self, our old sin, and, and these different things. But uh, as you talk about, even though things that may have been good or in the right time, in the right place, uh, that becomes uh, really challenging for us. I mean, you shared about in your own life, uh, you know, losing a loved one. Many people certainly over the past year lost loved ones. I think many people uh, or probably everybody could say uh, something has changed uh, over the past year in their life. Things are different. Uh, many things they're missing, things that were, were good in their time and, and place. And there's so much uh, looking back to, well, we just want to return to normal. We want to get that back and looking backwards rather than forwards. For, for those that, that want to do that, they want to have that vision for the future. They want to move forward. They want to uh, be energized with God's plan as you're talking about. Uh, how can we learn to put, a, put aside those things, even though they may be good, they may be good memories for us, there may be a part of us that uh, is still really attached to those things? Yeah, that, that's excellent, Tom, and, and I appreciate that perspective. You know, I think here's the deal that a lot of people have to work through is that Yesterday, if there was good things, you know, it's, sometimes it's easy for us to let go of the awful things, the, the bad things, the hurt, the abuse, the dysphoria. We realize, oh, I got to let that go. That was awful. Um, thank God that's gone. You know, it's like you hear people talk about 2020 as if it was almost like a throwaway year. Well, you know, God did some 
uh, amazing work in all of our hearts under the hood. So let's not just throw away the pressure because, you know, there's a lot of times the, the giants that come into our life are the actual um, opportunities that God provides for us for promotion. So just because you have an adversary, just because you have something that's difficult, don't throw it away and don't pray it away necessarily, but pray for the grace and the wisdom to know how to handle the situation because God's setting you up for promotion, my friend. God wants to take you forward. And that being said, if yesterday was good, you have to realize according to God's word and God's way of doing things, he always moves from glory to glory, to glory, to glory. God is unlimited in his new beginnings and in his levels of glory, in his level of goodness. So the only way you would want to stay stuck in yesterday is if you stop believing in the veracity of God's character, that God has more good things and more blessing for you. Don't, don't, don't get caught up in grieving the past like the world does where they get stuck. See, that's what the Bible says is that we don't mourn like the world mourns. We don't grieve like the world grieves that has no hope. Well, they get stuck because the thing is they don't have hope in a savior, in a God that's got more. God's unlimited in his goodness. So this is part of what we have to do. We have to have our minds renewed. I, I always hold to Romans 12, 2 that says, don't be conformed to this world. Don't take the shape of this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of my mind, proving what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And God's always moving us forward. There's good things ahead. That's good. And you mentioned that uh, a lot of people look at 2020. They talk about 2020 as a, a throwaway year. And I, I think a lot of people were uh, thinking that way. And when the new year hit, 2021, we were thinking, OK, well, maybe that was just 2020. That was a, a crazy year, a terrible year. And, and as soon as the date changes, everything's going to be uh, good again. And of course, we've seen already uh, more uh, political unrest and and uh, 2021 has challenges of its own. And so uh, it, it's not just about the date on the calendar, but it is about that uh, whatever's going on in our world, we continue to look at the good things that God is doing. And so uh, I want to ask you to pray for us in a few moments, but uh, I want to ask you to just kind of talk about what do you see God doing in this time? What are some things that we can be looking at as we push towards the future? And what are maybe some things that we should be praying for today? You know, I, Tom, I really believe that God has got a download of joy for his family, for his church. If, if you're watching right now and you feel like there's no joy in your life, you feel like you've been run over by a dump truck of fear and of anxiety, and you just feel like your light is about to flicker out and you're just feeling like upset all the time, upset in the middle of the night, you feel upset. I'm telling you, my friend, God has got a a dining room table set before you, even in the presence of your enemies, of joy, a banquet of love and joy he's got for you. And I really believe that God is going to help push out all that fear and anxiety. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have adversity. You're not going to have challenges because don't forget the reward is for he that or she that overcomes. When we overcome the giants, when we overcome the challenges, when we get on top of the mountain, we can see a whole lot further. So like I said, don't pray away all your adversity. Pray that God gives you that warrior spirit, that conquering spirit, so that you get the rewards of possessing the land. Remember when Caleb went into the promised land, he said, give me the high places. He was an old guy. He said, give me the high places because my youth is so renewed, I can run like I was when I was back in my 30s. He wanted the toughest places to possess. So I just want to encourage all of you. There is a download of joy coming from heaven. And I believe in the midst of this adversity, in the midst of all the, the questions and the trauma, God is going to heal our heart. He's going to heal our land and he's going to fill our souls with his joy unspeakable and full of glory. I believe it's coming. I believe it with all my heart. Amen. Stephen Marshall, thank you for encouraging us today. It's always good to have you with us. I want to encourage our viewers to connect with you at stephenandpam.com. And would you just pray for everyone watching today? Absolutely. Precious Heavenly Father, we just bring all of our fear, anxiety, Lord, all of the concern and the trouble about the future, we just bring it all to the foot of Jesus, to the foot of the cross, Lord, and we lay it all down right now. We just confess, Lord, we have been 
fearful, we've struggled with doubt, with unbelief, but Lord, we lay it down right now. And we just ask you to flood our souls. Jesus said this, he said, I've spoken these things to you so that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be full. Well, Lord, right now, here we are. Fill our hearts with your joy to overflowing so that we might be conduits, we might be vessel carriers of that great joy to the rest of this world. Father, we thank you for your oil of gladness, your oil of joy running down our brow, Lord, for the anointing and power to overcome every spiritual enemy in the precious name of Jesus. We believe we receive it. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much again, Stephen Marshall, for being with us today. For those that want to connect, go to stephenandpam.com. Thank you. God bless you. Good being with you guys.